Welcome back to the Stormcrow Show. My name is Josh. And I'm Brady. And today we are discussing something. What are we discussing, Brady? Yeah, so we were originally going to have a very good friend of ours come into our studio and talk to us about Magic the Gathering. Okay. However, half of him had a commitment. Half? Yes. One half said yes, one half said no. I take it we're discussing about something with Two at a Giant today? You got it. Okay. We're talking about Battle Bond. <laughs> All right. In fact, uh, more specifically, we're going to be talking about, uh, well, there's no middle ground here. The good and the bad about Battle Bond, from what we can tell. Uh, you sh the spoilers are now officially out, all of them. Yes. And in light of that, we thought we would give you our thoughts on that. Uh, like I said, good or bad. And, uh, of course, leave comments below to let us know what you think as well. And with that, uh, Brady, um, we just start off with the good, right? Yeah. All right, Brady. So what, what, was the, what, was the, what was one thing to start us off with that you thought was, was really good about this set? So, especially at the higher rarities, I love the reprints that are in this set. Okay. At the rare level, there's cards like Vigor, Diabolic Intent, Tide Spout Tyrant. Really great cards that haven't gotten a lot of printings. Mm -hmm. Mind's Eye too, right? Mind's Eye, yep. yep. Good call. And at the Mythic level, there's cards like Land Tax and Doubling Season. Oh, yeah. So I felt like, especially for the higher rarities, they really nailed it with the reprints. Mm -hmm. Like, this is definitely a set where I'm not going to mind spending MSRP on the packs. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. And on that point, if you don't mind, I'll go into the next point. Uh, MSRP is $4 a pack. You know, Perfect. Traditional, standard, you know, pack, new set pricing, not Masters $10 per pack pricing. And, and uh, you know, I'll, I'll reemphasize this, I'm sure, again and again, but the fact is, you know, Masters 25, we've said it before, it looked like a great set. It looked like a lot of fun to draft. Way too expensive. Mm -hmm. Way too expensive. This Battle Bond, if this was Masters 25 at the MSRP of, well, even $6, I would say, would be much more in line of what it should be. But Masters 25 with this, you know, this pricing at $4 per pack, roughly. This is looks like it's going to be a blast because the price is not disproportionate in my mind to what they're offering. Right. That's fair. And I guess the other thing that I really want to point out for sure, sure is I really like well, I like multiplayer formats. Yeah. So the format of course is fine. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> On top of that though, I really kind of like the new mechanics that they've shown off. Mhm. Mm um Especially, again, at the higher rarities. The lower rarities, as always, they tend to struggle a little bit. Sure. Whatever. But at the higher rarities, the assist mechanic, one card that stood out to me was game plan. Mm -hmm. And essentially, if you get your partner or an ally to pay as much as they possibly can into that card, you can essentially... I believe it casts for one blue. That's the only thing you'll have to pay. And it essentially does a time twister effect. Um, so that's game plan. So that's uh, that's normally six mana. I, I want to say so. I, okay. I, I might have to relook at the card again, but all I remember about it is that it's blue and that it does a time twister effect, which I was like, you know... Anytime you get a card that can somewhat replicate what a Power 9 card does, sure. you know it's probably pretty good. Yeah. Uh, okay, I see what you mean. So if your ally paid 5 mana, you paid 1 blue. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, no, that's that's very true. So I, I like that. And then I think the final thing that you and I were thinking of was the flavor of the set. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's really good. It's kind of cool that they went with, uh, you know, a, a sports... It's still, you know, a gladiatorial theme, but the idea is to try to emphasize a more, like, it's almost cartoonish in some ways, if you look at that. If you look at yeah. some of the, so, like, the go I think one of the goblins in, in one of the cards is, like, got this, these giant ears. Oh, yeah. funny. Like, these sort of, like, like comical looking, you know, supposed to be kids or whatever, and I assume that means that the picture of the purple-haired person that's about to fall into the lava, that the lava's, like, just an illusion, it's not real sort of thing or whatever. Because the idea is it's supposed to be, like, no one actually gets killed in this. Yeah. 
Um, so that's supposed to be kind of the flavor. It's supposed to be more lighthearted, which is nice because sometimes, I mean, you know, I don't mind serious aimed themes and so forth, but, you know, uh, sometimes I feel like uh, they get a little bit too into that in some of their sets and it gets kind of lost in context or it makes it less enjoyable because it's just so dark. Like, uh, Innistrad sometimes gets to be a little wearing after a while. Sure. And I guess leaping off of that, what were some things that we weren't thrilled about? I know that you had one in particular, and it was in regard to the reprints, especially at the lower levels. Yeah, I mean, they did a great job with, like, preprinting Spell Snare, which is a bit overdue. Chain Though, Lightning. Chain Lightning being another one. Um, the, I mean, to be fair with Spell Snare, that was really just, you know... Well, it's it's probably needed a lot more in modern right now because John has kind of made somewhat of a resurgence. So Tarmogoyf is now kind of another card to deal with again. Whereas for a while, Tarmogoyf was actually not as of a high threat just because of Fatal Push. Sure. And John not being as big of a deck. Um, I mean, still powerful, but just not as big. Um, so they did some good things, don't get me wrong. But uh, I guess a card that this is more of a puzzlement in some parts, but, I'd, you know, Wizards, if you're listening to this, I, you probably aren't, but if you ever do have a chance to listen to this, please understand that if you're going to print Swords to Plowshares as often as you do, you're going to raise questions of why you didn't print Path to Exile in this instead. Like, obviously in a Modern Masters set, like Modern Masters 3, okay, they print that in Modern Masters 3, so that's why it wasn't an Iconic Masters. I, I think Swords was pretty Iconic. I'll put a clarification up on the screen if uh, if it's not, or, or confirm it either way. Uh, but then it was also Masters 25. Okay, well, that makes sense. Swords was the first card. It's the older card. It's the card that kind of helped define the format. It's it's part of Magic's deep history, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, Battlebond doesn't really have that excuse, and as far as I can tell, I don't really see a good mechanical reason to suggest that one is far better or worse than the other from a balance standpoint. Because um, theoretically, Path would help out with things like Assist, whereas... Uh, Swords, of course, helps the opposing team gain a lot more life since the life total would be split between... Well, not split, but would be applied to the entire team. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I'm kind of like... I don't know, Wizards. Kind of like, don't drop the ball on this one as much as you sometimes do. No offense, but this is kind of a card that... Well, here's the prices. Yeah. 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 That's, that's fair. And... I guess going off of that, my biggest thing with this set, and it's not really a complaint against the set, it's more of a concern about what the future holds, mm -hmm. is they introduced partner with mechanic. Okay. So one creature specifically partners for the with the other creature, and it allows you to go search your library and put it into your hand. Okay, that's cool. This is a subset of the original partner mechanic, right? Correct. Okay. So these two creatures always work together, and if you look at the ones that are in Battle Bond, they're designed to synergize really well with each other. Sure. Now, when Commander 2016 first came out, I wasn't sure what to make of the partner pairings. That was when partner was first introduced. Yeah. It's turned out that partner is actually a very, very solid mechanic. Yep. And I do really think it's cool how you can kind of take a white-black creature and pair it with a red-green creature or a blue-green creature and pair it with the red-green creature. Yeah. You know, you're not locked into using two specific creatures if you don't want to. Right. And I guess that's my concern about the partner with mechanic is that if partner ever gets re revisited, I guess my concern would be, is it going to be partner with or just partner? Because yeah. it's kind of the same, similar situation as what Shroud and Hexproof went through. Now, Hexproof is almost always better than Shroud. Right. But there might be some occasions where you want Shroud. And as a result of that, it's kind of sad that Shroud went away. I guess my point is, is that I really want to make sure that Partner does come back. Because if it just turns into Partner with, I feel like... Wizards is going to be taking the design space away from the player and just putting it automatically inside the cards. Yeah. And that's, you know, we like being creative with our decks. Yeah. You know, creating new synergies and whatnot. Yeah, definitely. 
So that's my biggest concern with the set. Again, you know, maybe some of the reprints could have been better. Yeah. But on the whole, like, the MSRP is great. A lot of the reprints are great. Yeah. So that's pretty much, I think, what we had for today. Yeah, I, I mean, I would say this is definitely the, uh, well, actually one thing that they also, more of a puzzlement, I suppose, is that they didn't bring back Surge as a mechanic. That's a fair point, um, yes. I mean, to be fair, it's kind of similar thing. Theoretically, as assist, since it's basically a cost reduction mechanic, that's effectively what Surge is doing. Yep. So I, maybe that was part of it, but it is kind of funny that the mechanic that really clearly identifies like a two-headed giant type situation. Yeah. Uh, was not brought back. Um, I, I maybe have a, I'll have an explanation for it. I haven't seen one as of yet, but it, it's more of a puzzling decision that they yeah. made that may didn't entirely make sense to me. In either case, though, uh, I would say this set is really good. Yeah, no, for sure. Like, honestly, one of my favorite sets ever out of, like, every Magic set mm -hmm. that I've ever been around. Or that I've... Never been around. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've technically been around since around the beginning of it. But the fact is, is that for the Magic sets that have come out since I've played, yeah. probably one of my all-time favorites was Conspiracy 2, Take the Crown. Yeah. Because that was just a set chock full of reprints. It had great flavor. Mm -hmm. It had interesting new mechanics that have turned out to be very good, some of them. Yeah. Monarch is actually surprisingly good. Yeah. And I feel like Battle Bond actually follows in this same vein to a large extent. I agree. And, and I would say Wizards, if you're, again, if you're some reason or somehow you're decided to listen to this, uh, Please do. Uh, but yeah. if you listen to this, uh, this is really how you want to make, uh, I would say, future sets as far as like reprint sets like that aren't standard legal. Yep. Like, I would say master sets are fine, uh, but you need to make sure that they're actually worth like pulling stuff out of, not necessarily always winning. So Modern Masters 3 is what you want to go with, not Masters 25 at that MSRP. Yeah. Conspiracy 2, and from what I can tell, Battle Bond, and, and even Conspiracy 1, you could even argue, I think, uh, to some extent, those are, if that's really what you're trying to aim for, I would say that, I'd almost prefer that mm -hmm. on the whole than Master Sets just because I'm more, I, like, from a draft perspective, you know, I'd much rather be able to draft two or three times than spend, like, you know, $40 is a lot of money, even yes. if you have a full-time job like I do. I mean, it's just, it's a lot of money, and I think it's better for uh, the price to not be um, 40 bucks a draft, basically. That's, that's, yeah. that's the end of the day. Especially, especially because, like you said, at the end of the day, it's a hobby. It is a hobby. It is a hobby, and, you know, there's only so much money and time that we can devote to this kind of thing. So Absolutely. So make it worth our time is basically what we're asking. And our money. <laughs> and our money. <laughs> yes. In either case, uh, but what do you guys think? I think that's uh, an important point. Uh, obviously... Uh, we're hoping to, I think, maybe get a chance to even play it or draft it. Um, but in any case, uh, let us know what you think. Uh, is this a set that's impressive? Is there something that's really like, oh my goodness, why didn't they do this? Or, wow, I never thought of this. You know, let us know your thoughts. Put them in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Do you guys even like the format? Yeah, that's that, another guys. I mean, yeah, yeah. because honestly, if you don't like Two-Headed Giant, you're probably not going to really like this set. So That's true. But in any case, uh, I think that covers it, right? Yep. So, I'm Brady. I'm Josh. And this has been the Stormcrow Show. Thanks for watching.